During your 3D printing journey, you're going to want to try different types of filaments and something you're going to come across is moisture damage. If you print with a filament and it comes out beautiful, but then you put the roll away for a few months, a few weeks, or even a few days, and then try to print again, you might find with some filaments that the print is no longer good. It's all bubbly and stringy and awful. And that's because during that time, your filament has absorbed moisture from the air. That's because different types of plastics can be hygroscopic, meaning they literally absorb moisture from the air into them, and then that moisture bubbles and spits as it goes through the hot end and ruins the print. However, you can restore filaments back to their original condition by removing that moisture. In a previous video, I experimented with a low-cost dehydrator to remove moisture from filaments, and this is a result from this roll after eight hours in a dehydrator. What I have here is a product from Polyalchemy. Many of you will be familiar with their really shiny filaments I've shown on the channel before, and they have a new solution to try to combat moisture damage in filaments. It's a vacuum sealing bag. Filaments come vacuum sealed, but these are reusable with a USB pump. So in this video, I'm gonna put their product to the test, and I'm gonna see if I can keep this roll of PTG dry using their vacuum system. Let's get started. So the airlock filament vacuum sealing system comes with two main components. You have the pump, which is USB powered, and you have the bags. Now, um, <laughs> they sent over quite a few boxes, but each pack has 12 of these resealable vacuum bags. And the thing about them is like, look, they didn't invent this technology. People have been using vacuum bags, even resealable vacuum bags for ages for keeping food fresh and sealed because again, food, gets damaged by the air with oxygen and that, and you want to keep it fresh. And it's like when you buy the rolls of filament as well, they come vacuum bagged, vacuum sealed. But these are specially designed and made to suit the size of filament rolls. The one thing that Polyarchy does really well is their product design. These look really nice and uh, the pump is no exception. So it has this lovely little box and it's a really small little thing. It's got no battery in it. It's purely USB powered off a USB-C port, which is nice to see, uh, but it has a good weight to it. It's it's metal, so it's an aluminium case with plastic top and bottom. It's got a little rubber seal there that goes over the, the valve in the bags. And this valve allows you to reuse these bags. You don't have to cut anything to open them up. They've got an opening at the top that seals, and you suck the air out through that one-way valve. They do provide the USB-C cable, that's nice, but they don't provide any sort of power source. You need to provide that yourself, but most people will have a phone charger in their house. It just needs to be fairly beefy to run this pump. Um, I'm using my Oppo one, which is four amps at five volts, which is ridiculous. Uh, it's more than enough to run this pump. So the plan is to take this PTG, which I've dried for eight hours, uh, and I printed this Benchy off in it already, and the surprise, surprise, the machine I'm using to print this with is the Tronxy D01. I know many of you probably expect me to never mention Tronxy as a company ever again after their previous, the previous review, the review of the D01 and what happened, but I have fitted a Himera hot end to it, and I've been using it primarily as a PTG workhorse, and it does fantastic prints. Uh, this one is really good. The only issue is the cooling. I don't have a cooling fan fitted to it right now. That means the chimney on this Benchy is a little bit droopy. It didn't cool fast enough, but the rest is phenomenal, especially considering it's PTG, which can be quite stringy. So I'm gonna try to keep this roll dry using the filament system. I'm gonna leave it for a week and a half and then come back to it and we'll see how it goes. But before I put it into any of these bags, I'm just gonna take a bit off it and store it just out in the open. And the plan is to use this part to print another Benchy, and I'm gonna compare the results because that will be definitive in terms of seeing if the, the vacuum bag sealing system uh, will actually do anything in terms of keeping the moisture out of this filament. All right, so I've got my USB-C plugged in, and so it's not too loud. And it's got a pretty strong suction. So actually I just read the instructions properly. You're actually meant to use these as like a zip. So you put them over the seal and um, make sure it's fully closed because if there's any openings at all, it's not gonna hold a vacuum. Um, so that's what these are for. Over the hole. Um, and also because it's making a suction, you don't actually have to hold it in place. <laughs> so you could go do something else while it does its work because it takes a bit of time. Uh, it's not super fast, but yeah, this is really, 
really quite doable as a system. Now there's not much air in it, I'm gonna make sure it's held down in place because it was starting to fall off the valve. Yeah, that's pretty good, that's a lot of suction. Okay, sweet. And uh, the instructions did say to just to push on the seal, the valve, just to make sure it's closed. Cool, okay, well that's sealed up. I'll catch you guys in a week and a half to see what the results are. Just kidding. Alrighty, and we are back. And it's actually been a bit longer than a week. It's actually been more like two to two and a half because the results were unexpected. There's a few things here that are kind of interesting and I'd like to talk about. So to recap, we start the test with this roll of green PTG. So initially I did a test where I just had been exposed to the elements for uh, probably over a year and the Pikachu test I did is just so rubbish. It's foamy and that but to be fair I didn't have a cooling fan set up on the Himera on the Tronxy D01 yet So I decided to swap to a Benchy model just to better represent the print because only the chimney is the only real thing that needs the cooling But you can really see how foamy it is for PTG. It printed okay, and it's still pretty strong But it's clearly moisture damaged so I dried the roll for a couple of hours and then I got this result with a Benchy, and this is a really good Benchy for PTG. Again, the chimney stack needed cooling, but the rest is actually fantastic. There is no stringing at all, and it's really got that really nice sort of transparent PTG look that I want versus the foaminess. So here's where things get interesting. So I took a sample of that PTG that I had dried and I left it out in the elements, and then I took the rest of the filament and put it into the vacuum bag system so I could compare between the two. And after a week, I took the sample that had been exposed to the elements and tried printing. And it's actually pretty good. It's nowhere near as bad as the original test with the Pikachu. There's a little bit of stringing and a little bit of sort of the, the retraction globs that slowly cause these little sort of trees to come from the print. They weren't, ele they weren't evident in the dried print but it's crept in over a week of exposure. But overall, really not too bad. So I decided to hold off for a bit longer and try testing with the exposed filament uh, two weeks later. And that's what this result is here. And it's interesting, two weeks later is clearly more moisture damage than the one week, but again, still not as bad as the one that's been left out. Now this is very much dependent on your weather. You know, we're, we're in a, having a very humid summer this year, so it's very hot during the day right now. It's boiling hot outside, but we are getting thunderstorms. So the humidity is really variable, but it's still quite high. So it's interesting that the PTG didn't absorb moisture as quick as I expected, but here's where it gets very interesting. The roll that was sealed in the NanoVac airlock system from Polyalchemy. It's not as good as the one that was perfectly dried. It is better than the one that was left out exposed for two weeks, absolutely, but it's not as good as the one that was dried and used straight away. Which is interesting to me and not as drastic as a result that I expected. So I decided to do another mini test with nylon. Nylon is one of the hardest filaments to keep dry because it absorbs moisture just like that and it really destroys the printing quality. And to demonstrate, here I had to have some stringing tests with a nylon from Fibrology, which are, I think a Polish brand, I can't quite remember. It's a really good nylon PA12, uh, really strong, tough parts. Here's what happens when you leave nylon to the elements just to absorb moisture. This is what you get. It's such a travesty of a stringing test. It was popping and spitting as it was extruding, clearly just so moisture logged. And I had to dry it for quite a while. I actually dried it for like eight hours or so. Um, and then the result after drying was night and day. This string test of the machine could well be PLA for how clean it is for nylon. Nylon is notoriously difficult to print. No string at all compared to the one that was left to the elements. And because nylon absorbs moisture so quickly, I think it's gonna be a really good test of the vacuum sealing system from Polyalchemy. So I did the same thing. I took a sample, left it out to the elements, and I sealed the roll in the bag, and I came back to it a week later. And this is really clear to see. This is what happens if you leave it out for a week. It just absorbs moisture so quickly. But the one in the bag, again, not as good as the one I dried and used straight away. It is way better than the one that was left to the elements, but it's not perfect. There's still a little bit of moisture that's crept in over time. And I think that's why these vacuum sealed bags from factories come with a desiccant as well, just to suck up that last bit of moisture that might be sealed with them. I did throw a desiccant bag in with a nylon that I had been drying as well, but maybe it wasn't enough. 
So what's the takeaway from this? Should you bother vacuum sealing your filament? Well, for me, I'm definitely gonna do it for nylon, polycarbonate, um, and PETG, as well as probably TPU, because TPU is another filament that absorbs moisture really quickly. But having said that, I'll probably still have to dry, at least the nylon, before I print it, even if it's been bagged. And it won't have to be dried for as long as just being left to the elements, but it still, I think, will have to be dried for a bit. And if you're really worried about moisture, you might even want to print from your drying system into the printer itself. I've done that before with my cheap dehydrator. I just run the filament out of it while it's still on into the printer, and then you can get really clean prints even with nylon. But yeah, if you want to store your filaments for a long period of time, I think it's a good solution. I don't know if I'd bother doing it with PLA, but something that's also important to note is the dust that can settle on rolls. I noticed down in my workshop that there's dust on a lot of the old rolls and dust and debris can get into your hot end and jam it up. So if you're in a dusty environment like a school workshop or something, it might be worthwhile using one of these bags because they are reusable. I did test out this bag and I was able to open it up use the roll and then chuck it back in and reseal with no problem. Now let's talk a little bit about the device and its pricing and the quality of it and my final thoughts. Uh, it's really well built. Uh, Judd over at Polyacme has done a really good job on it. I will say that um, it draw, does draw a bit of power. I noticed that this, uh, this distribution USB charging brick, it says that it can do eight amps total output power, but it was cutting out while trying to run this with full suction, but my Oppo fast charger had no issues running this pump. And then there's the price. I'm not gonna say the price because uh, it changes, but I'm gonna put the price here currently. And talking to uh, the team at Polyalchemy, it's really quite good. I looked at the pricing for just vacuum sealing systems and it's really quite competitive. So this is actually a really affordable option, all things considered, especially when Judd's put the effort in to make it fit filament rolls properly, and the fact the bags are reusable. So there you have it, the NanoVac and Airlock system from Polyalchemy. At the end of the day, it's not an overly exciting product. Uh, they've done a very good job making it look well presented, but I think it's a very useful product, especially if you're printing with very much hygroscopic filaments like nylon or PTG or TPU. It's gonna help keep them sealed for a long period of time between uses and then you won't have to spend too much time drying them before you have to use them again. If you found this video useful, maybe consider subscribing to Makers Muse. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.